Prior to the construction of the Panama Canal, the only way for ships to travel from one side of the American continent to the other was by rounding Cape Horn. This was an incredibly long and costly journey, and as the world grew more interconnected and dependent on trade, many nations sought a shortcut from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific in the form of the Northwest Passage, proposed route through the icy waterways between the Canadian coast and the Arctic ice sheets. As this exploration occurred in a pre-GPS and satellite society, exploration of the Arctic waters in search of the Northwest Passage was purely speculative. A lot of people went in exploring in hope of finding the Northwest Passage, just assuming that they would head west and eventually end up in Japan somehow. This lack of confirmation didn't deter people however and many set out to discover the hypothetical trade route doing important exploration work on the way. Explorers like Henry Hudson, William Baffin, Alexander Mackenzie and George Vancouver did great work mapping the coasts of North America and the Canadian Arctic and their names can still be found all across the lands that they explored. As time and exploration marched on, the possibility of the Northwest Passage was pushed further and further north, well into the Arctic Circle. But deterred explorers were not, and gradually the Canadian Arctic was explored and charted. By 1845, many believed that only one more voyage of exploration would be required to fully chart the Canadian Arctic and plot a Northwest Passage on a route through Lancaster Sound to the Mackenzie River. For this expedition, the British Admiralty, who had financed many of the previous Arctic exploration missions, placed Sir John Franklin, veteran naval officer and former governor of Tasmania, in command of two ships, Erberus and Terror. Franklin was 59 at the time of his appointment, however, many of the Admiralty's top choices had declined the offer, and Franklin was the most experienced man willing to do the job. The ships in question were some of the most modern available, notably being fitted with steam engines for both propulsion and heating, and they were also stocked with over three years worth of tin food. Franklin and his two ships set sail from Great Britain on the 19th of May 1845 with a crew of 135 officers and men. They headed north to the Orkney Islands and from there to Disco Bay in Greenland. Here the final preparations were made before sailing across Baffin Bay. On the 26th of July, Franklin and his two vessels were moored to an iceberg in Lancaster Sound, but somewhere between Baffin Bay and Devon Island, where they encountered a small whaling vessel called the Prince of Wales. From here, the Terror and Herbers sailed away into the icy seas, never to be seen or heard from by anyone in Europe again. After Franklin and his two vessels had failed to return home, numerous rescue operations were authorised at the behest of Franklin's widow. However, they failed to find anything and Franklin and his expedition remained lost. However, thanks to countless historical and archaeological expeditions in subsequent years, we can piece together an outline of what happened after the ships were last seen on the 26th of July. As no first-hand account of the expedition exists, what follows is largely based on efforts of numerous explorers and scientists who over the years have laboured tirelessly to bring what has happened to Franklin's expedition to light. After passing through Lancaster Sound on the 26th of July, it is assumed that Franklin put down anchor at Beachy Island, just off Devon Island, for the winter, as the waters have become too laden with ice to navigate. When the ice cleared for the summer, the expedition proceeded down Peel Sound to some point along the coast of King William Island, where, in September of 1846, a year after setting out, the two ships became stuck in the ice and never sailed again. Messages found on King William Island indicated that by 1847, Franklin and 24 other of the crew had died. It was at this point that the remaining crew abandoned the two ships in the ice proceeding on foot southwards to Back River in hopes of reaching civilization. None of the crew ever made it home, and their graves are littered along the coast of the Canadian Arctic. Many reasons have been proposed as to why they failed to make the journey home. Many suggest that as soon as the ships became trapped in the ice, the expedition was doomed. The crew had little or no experience with travelling on foot over the Arctic landscape and they lacked the proper clothing and equipment to do so. 
Further evidence shows that the tins of food on the ships held within them a hidden peril. The lead-based solder used to make the tins had leaked into the food, contaminating them and, as a result, weakening the ill-equipped crew when they consumed them. Add to this the traditional maritime diseases like scurvy, it is clear to see that the overburdened and under-equipped crew did not stand a chance of battling both the elements and disease as they travelled across the Arctic, eventually succumbing to cannibalism and death. Franklin's lost voyage has captured the minds of many, the ambitious nature of the expedition and the mystery surrounding its disappearance making it last long in the public consciousness. The Northwest Passage was eventually discovered by John McClure in 1850 and was first navigated by Roland Amundsen in 1906. The Amundsen expedition was an amazing feat that would follow in the footsteps of Franklin, but alas, is a story for another time.